Martin Parr in Wales was published in 2019 to mark an exhibition of the same name at the National Museum Wales in Cardiff. It's available from online retailers. Amazon, for example, lists it at £19.99. I got my signed copy from the Martin Parr Foundation, but they've sold out of those. According to the back cover of this book, Martin Parr has been photographing people and places for decades and is one of our foremost documentary photographers. This book shows the development of his vision as he travelled through Wales. Some images feature typical and familiar Parr locations, most notably the beach, while others are more particularly Welsh. The newest illustrates his most recent technical shift to the telephoto lens. All the images show us how Parr sees not the different, the unique, but rather the known, the moments we share as people. Owen Shears wrote the introduction for this book and the exhibition. He writes, This exhibition is not about Wales. What I mean by this is that the images that make up its whole were not created in an attempt to capture the personality of the nation. These images are not the result of a photographer going in search of something, but rather a document of what he saw as he passed through Wales on another journey entirely. He asks, what are the qualities of Martin's gaze that can elicit such a response? The response that something is very Martin Parr. At the heart, there is nearly always the communal patterns of leisure, and more specifically a study of the ephemeral unguarded moment within the context of holiday, hobby, time off or event. This is what seems to draw his eye again and again. How do we behave, move, celebrate and look when freed from the constraints of work and schedule into the looser but still often socially prescriptive rhythms of organised relaxation? Although expressive, these moments are rarely given expression. Parr is perhaps the laureate of the turned head, the back of the neck, the side profile, the silhouette. Such a perspective lends further weight to the sense of a singular vision that haunts so many of his images the camera as omniscient observer, the eye that looks at the lookers, the visual energy of its lens charged not with the intimacy of experience, but rather the composition of observation. Parr himself writes in the introduction, Over the years I have accumulated a substantial archive of photographs recording life in the UK, and within this parameter I have been very conscious of exploring its rich variety of communities and regions. I've always been drawn to Wales. Having lived just a few miles away from the border in nearby Bristol for over 30 years, I had often visited to shoot photos and teach on the famous documentary photography course at Newport. About 10 years ago, I acquired an apartment in Tenby, which, having visited most of the seaside towns in the UK, I had concluded was the most picturesque seaside town in the country.
I sincerely hope you enjoyed this look through Martin Parr in Wales. A remarkable book, definitely one for the collection. I have other Martin Parr books which will be coming up soon. Here's some of his early black and white work, which we don't see so often. And this shot from 2013 could just as so easily have been in Last Resort, couldn't it? An absolute classic Martin Parr shot, as is this. Bank Holiday Land Dudno 2013. Candy floss. The telephoto work seems to me to work very well. And the mixture of uh, the old favourites of food and the colour of food and the delight in just such simple food is a recurring theme, isn't it, in Parr's work? Next week, Shirley Baker, Dog Show, 1961 to 1978, published by Hoxton Mini Press. A great book. I'll see you next Saturday. <laughs>